All right, folks, this is Pat Green. We are about to go on a little road trip through my life uh, with mile markers along the way, some fun stories. I got some new music coming out uh, on a record called Miles and Miles of You. I think you're going to dig it. Thanks for coming. Uh, okay, so I was born in San Antonio, April 5th, 1972. Um, uh, at, I guess it's Bear County. Uh, Methodist Hospital. Um, anyway, my dad was uh, was an Air Force pilot at the time. Was a trainer pilot during the Vietnam era, um, training guys to go over there and be in war. And um, and anyway, my brother was born on the base. And uh, actually, my brother David, when he came along. Um, Mom had been pregnant for like 10 months and the doctor really wasn't paying that close attention and didn't know that she'd been pregnant all that time. So needless to say, when I came along, she didn't trust the base uh, hospital. We went outside, but um, anyway, so yeah, along came me. And, um, and then, you know, my folks moved to Waco a few years later when I was still too young to remember. But a lot of my friends in college uh, were Alamo Heights guys, and um, David Henry, Brian Zintgraff, Paige Blanton, and the list goes on and on. Uh, so a lot of spring breaks and other you know school holidays, a lot of time in the summer, I'd go down there and hang out with those guys um, in their you know in their hometowns. And um, so I got to love places like John T. Flores Country Store. I love going down to Mi Tierra. Um, there's a place called Blanco's that is a Mexican food joint and a strip mall that I really really like. Uh, Chris Madrid's. Um, you know, uh, uh, those guys knew all the great places to hang out. And I don't know if, I mean, I did some sit-in gigs quite a bit uh, in and around San Antonio. The, the one that comes to mind is opening for Jerry Jeff Walker at John T. Floors. Um, and just seeing what I thought was an ocean of people and like no end to the people in, in, in my vision from the stage. And so uh, that was certainly a motivator. Um, there's a few guys uh, from down in San Antonio that I ended up writing songs with. Um, and if you look back in some of the old songwriting credits on my early records, there's a guy named Paige Blanton. Uh, he's from Pleasanton, which is just south of San Antonio. We wrote I Like Texas together, there's, uh, which is played you know, every night on the home game win uh, for the Texas Rangers. And David Henry, who's uh, from down there, man, he is all over. Uh, my early day songs. As far as songs that come from uh, South Texas and San Antonio, man, that, that's just a feel. It's a part, you're part of that culture, you're part of the people, and you realize that things like dove hunting um, and, and going down there, you know, being southbound on 35 and getting down there to, you know, I, I mean, I think it's the cradle, man. It, it is so uh, unique in that there's so, it's a melting pot of people. And um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of songs that, um, that come from down there. Well, um, I was quite young when, when we moved to Waco, so, long, so young I don't really remember. But I do remember we lived in, uh, we lived in Hewitt, Texas on Castleman Creek Road. Uh, and it was a brand new house and you know my folks were so proud and it was a little tiny thing but it was you know it was brand new so uh, in the suburbs of Waco uh, so not in Waco proper but um, but I remember the time in Hewitt and going to school out there those were my first real memories I remember one time I thought there was a volcano at the end of my street <laughs> so and I didn't I didn't know that it was just a little pond and somebody had a fountain anyway um, and then my brother I remember my brother telling me there was a wolf in the toilet so I'd never go to the bathroom in our in our bathroom I, my parents got mad because I'd always go in their room but um, you know that's when I fell in love with the Dallas Cowboys that's when I you know started my love of music my, my folks had this giant uh, record player I don't know if you remember when a record player was connected to the TV was the speakers and it was this giant piece of furniture along one wall in everybody's house and that was the only television in the house and it was really bad reception and you had the rabbit ears and uh, First time I ever saw snow, first time I ever made a snowman was there in Hewitt. Uh, that's where Willie Nelson got busted for smoking weed. And uh, <laughs> you know, a lot, of, a lot of funny things happened down there in Hewitt. I went to Vanguard High School uh, there in Waco. And it was a small, very tight-knit school. I had only 11 kids in my class. Um, but man, it, it, was, it was perfect for me. It was, it was a great fit because it was a small school. I could be active in all the athletics. <laughs> Even though I was really not talented in any of them, I was a jack of all trades. I played baseball, basketball, tennis, um, and yeah, I mean, it was the normal high school, you know, situation, getting in trouble and 
you know, a lot of moms out there didn't want me dating their daughters, and I was fine with that. But um, anyway, yeah, just a normal, normal teenager. My first memory of music uh, in Waco was I had a friend on the basketball team, his name was Jerry Lawson, and his dad uh, had a white uh, Fender Stratocaster in his house. And he was the very first guy, uh, Mr. Lawson, was the first guy to ever sit down with me and show me anything on the guitar. And, um, you know, Buddy Holly songs, Three Chords and the Truth, he taught me how to uh, play Fade Away. And, um, you know, that was my first time with my hands on a guitar knowing uh, how to play something um, and that was you know my I don't know sophomore junior year in high school um, during that time my dad was a stage performer like a local stage a, lo a local actor I, I, I got to watch him control a crowd and and feed a crowd with his energy and I think all that just kind of you know morphed onto me and uh, kind of set the ball rolling set the tone the first time I ever heard my, one of my shows sold out was in Waco. I can't remember the name of the place. It was either like the Pelican Club or the Wharf or something like that. Anyway, it's gone, long gone now. Um, uh, this guy came up with me to me in a, with a wad of cash, and it was I think it was five dollars or seven dollars to get in, and so it wasn't that much money. And I don't, I mean, it was, you know, it was six or seven hundred people, whatever it was. But I was like, where am I going to spend all this money? I got to do this for a living, and uh, I, I don't know. I kind of looked back at that and smiled because um, it was. So long ago, it was, you know, probably 27 years ago, 26 years ago, and uh, man, that, those, those are the, 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 the starting days, the very first days of my life in music, so a lot of good memories. So in 1990, I graduated from high school, so that was also the year that I started at Texas Tech, and um, I applied, you know, mostly to Texas schools, a few outside, but um, my folks wanted me to stay in Texas, and Lubbock is as far as away, away from, uh, from Waco as you can get and still be in the border of Texas, so um, that's, that's where I chose to go. Kind of a lucky thing. I, you know, I think if I would have moved to Austin and been with my, my brother, went to school there, I'd have been, you know, in his shadow the whole time, and uh, Lubbock, I was really just kind of got to be myself. I met all the friends that changed my life. Um, Corey Morrow stands out above most of them just because we played music together all the time down there. Um, that's where I met my wife. Um, basically, I owe everything I have to those years back there in Lubbock. So early on, well, you know, my freshman year at Texas Tech, um, I had an electric guitar um, that I, I got, you know, a Yamaha bright red, you know, I was going to be a rocker kind of, you know, guy, but then ended up, like, you can't play an electric guitar without an amp, and if you do have an amp, nobody in the world wants to hear somebody learn how to play a guitar with an electric anyway. Um, so uh, my freshman year, I, I traded in that, uh, that electric guitar and got a, an acoustic, a Yamaha acoustic guitar, and um, I spent my entire first, I don't know, year and a half learning of school, learning how to play uh, that guitar. I played, you know, I lived in Coleman Hall, uh, and I would sit in the in the basement where the laundromat was, so that I wouldn't, you know, drive everybody on my on my floor crazy. Um, but that's where it all, you know, came together. And learning to play guitar, and learning how to play and sing at the same time, and then learning how to be in front of people, all happened within the first two years uh, up in Lubbock. And I I, I know that. Uh, well, obviously, looking back on a 25-year career. I know that that was the best of all things that I could have done with my time at Tech. I learned more about my profession by being there. Um, and I, you know, you look at it from Buddy Holly to Joe Ely and uh, Jimmy Dale Gilmore, me, Corey, Josh Abbott, William Clark Green, Wade Bowen. I mean, the, the line of, uh, of people, uh, you know, the group of people that come out of Texas Tech with music uh, in their lives for forever is, it's, it's substantial, so uh, that's a good, it's a good spot to go if you're wanting to get into the business. My first gig um, ever was at Bash Rip Rocks um, there on Broadway. Uh, I think it was on Broadway. Anyway, it was right over there, in, you know, right off of campus. And it held, I don't know, maybe 200 people. And me and Corey Moore, we, you know, it was just two guys on stools, um, the Indigo Boys, if you will, um, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, we, we, we played 
old Merle Haggard songs and Johnny Cash, and we'd only play, we only had written two or three songs. Uh, so, you know, it, when we played a, one of our original songs, that's when everybody got up and went and got a beer because they didn't know the song. But uh, yeah, it was just our friends that would come out and watch us play. And then we played there a few times, and uh, I won't ever forget when Corey, we were standing out right in front of the, of the bar, and we had loaded up the little rented PA with two two speakers on the sticks and a, you know, a little control board, a little sound board. And Corey looked at me and he goes, man, I'm leaving school. I'm going to Austin. And we were still, you know, this is my, my junior year in college. Um, and I go, man, no way, dude, you gotta stay in. You gotta get your degree. What, what if this doesn't pan out? And he's like, man, it's gonna pan out. And I'll be danged if he didn't go down to Austin and make, you know, he was making records and had all these, you know, people following him around, and I was so jealous. But um, you know, that gave that's you know that's also kind of when I met my wife, and so I, I stuck around for the right reasons. But um, I, I sure felt like I was behind the I was behind in the game when when Corey went to Austin and started making his his way. You know, right after I got out of tech, I didn't go straight to Austin. I moved to Waco first. I worked at a restaurant. I met the guys, Greg Henry and, and Jeff Griffin and a few other folks that ended up kind of changing my life uh, and making me get serious about music. Um, and then right about that time, my girlfriend, uh, Corey, decided to go to UT Law School. And, um, and I followed her like any good boy would do uh, down to Austin. and. Um, you know, that is where life went from pretty, you know, I know what I'm going to do to this is it. The lights, I mean, the lights were already on, but then all the lights turned on and that all that energy and emotion and uh, all the songs just started pouring out all the time, all the time writing, every day, all day, writing songs, notepad by the bed, um, you know, it, it just seemed like that those 10 years when I was in Austin, uh, that's when the lid just came off and uh, we, you know, got a big record deal and uh, started traveling all over the world. Uh, we got married in Luckenbach um, in 2000 uh, and, you know, we had babies starting in 2003. Our first kid, you know, Kellis came along when we were down in Austin. So, yeah, um, the roots of the musical tree in, in our life started right there. When life started to change was when, you know, we started getting a few gigs around town, uh, Stubbs, and Stubbs Barbecue, there's a great music venue. We started, you know, selling more CDs, selling out bigger and bigger places. And Pootie Locke, who was, um, a, you know, a friend just because I'd opened a few shows for, for, for Willie, he was out at one show and I said, look, you know, I'll do two free shows at your bar, which is called the Pootie's Hilltop Bar. Um, if you'll get me on Willie's 4th of July picnic. And so kind of a bribe <laughs> that worked out pretty well for me. But um, anyway, so did those shows and got on the picnic and then Willie started using me more and more to be an opening act for him. And um, I just recall that, you know, with his stamp of approval, um, yeah, you know, I got more street cred. And then Jerry Jeff Walker uh, lived you know, only a few blocks away. And then, you know, after that picnic, I got to play on his Labor Day show. And then I started, you know, becoming friends with, with Jerry Jeff and we got to be pretty tight, like buddies. And we'd go, I'd go to dinner at his house and he and Susan, me and Corey, you know, would listen to music and Jerry Jeff always had a guitar in his hands. And he, uh, that was, you know, he played me one of his son songs, Django Walker songs. Uh, called uh, Texas On My Mind, at the end of the day, that became a really big hit for us. While we were living in Austin, our band got really big um, in, on, a, on, you know, within a re like Texas and in, in, the, in the region around, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. Um, we were, you know, getting 10, 15,000 people out without even thinking about it. And, uh, you know, so we were starting to make waves regionally and that's kind of when uh, the Universal Records guys, um, Monty and Avery Lipman, they came down from New York um, to, to see me play and, you know, I had a tour bus that I'd rented for the week. I certainly didn't have one all the time, but I think we were playing there and, you know, 
couple of bars in North Carolina, and whatnot. But um, uh, they came out and they got on the bus and you know gave me the whole "We'll make you a rock star" speech and you, you know "We'll make you rich and famous." And um, I was like, guys, I, you don't have to worry about that. We're, we're doing pretty well down in Texas, you know. <laughs> We're gonna make it. Just just promote my stuff. And so, you know, it wasn't too long. We signed with them a few weeks later. Uh, they got me a publishing deal. Uh, they joined up with Universal South, which was their Nashville branch, and um, put out Three Days, which got nominated for a couple of Grammys. And then our next record was Wave on Wave. When they put the full weight of Universal Records behind uh, behind Wave on Wave, it was game over, man. It was, we, we didn't know what to do with all of it. We were, there was just so much opportunity out there for us to play, and we were, uh, we were having you know, enormous shows, uh, really far away places in Seattle and LA and Vegas and Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, man, that was, uh, those were wonderful days. And then we got to be on the big tours with Kenny and Keith Urban. And, uh, and Dave Matthews, and other, you know, just, yeah. yeah. Those were those were all Austin years that were a blast. I remember my first gig in Fort Worth was at the Aardvark, uh, which is down on Barry. It's kind of catty corner to TCU. Um, I mean, it is a little tiny place, and um, announcer guy comes on, ladies and gentlemen, Pete Green. And, uh, you know, of course, that's, that's a memory that you can't ever forget. And our next gig was at a place called Horny's. And, uh, you know, once again, the band outnumbered the crowd. And, um, uh, you know, we, I think my, my tour manager at the time left, accidentally left a box of T-shirts and koozies on the top of the car and drove off. And so we had to drive all the way back to get our T-shirts and, and koozies so we didn't lose all of our, uh, our merchandise. But... Um, you know, thankfully, you know, time passes and I got to start playing at Billy Bob's and I have a, a wonderful relationship over there. I play there, you know, a couple times a year and, um, and that's home sweet home. It's, it's my favorite place to play when I'm uh, in town just because, you know, I have 15 minutes from my house. About the time that uh, Corey got pregnant with my daughter, Rainy, which uh, Rainy was born in 2006, we, I was traveling uh, so much by air. You know, and, and anytime you wanted to get back down to Austin, you had to stop in Dallas. And so I ended up spending about a half a day on the way out and on the way in, um, in the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. And I was like, let's cut out the middle, man. Let's just move up there where I, you know, where I could just drive to the airport. And um, so uh, that, that, was, that was a big part of our decision. I think we felt like Austin was kind of, you know, crowding in around us a little bit. Um, it went from being kind of a laid back sleepy college town to this it during the you know decade that we lived there it exploded so we just moved up here and kind of made sense to us fort worth is still has that cowtown feel yeah it, it became home to us uh, like you know about 15 16 years ago and uh, we we love it here uh, we you know all our friends are here, and so yeah, we, we feel lucky to be in Tarrant County. Uh, my son, Kellis, is a senior in high school, and uh, he's either going to UT or Arkansas, but that changes on a daily basis, so I'm just kind of being patient and letting him choose that um, or make that decision. My daughter is 15, and she is very 15, uh, but she's, she's fascinating and a lot of fun to be around. There's always some school drama that, that I get to explore with her on the way home uh, from soccer games and from school and stuff like that. So um, yeah, life is, life is going along great. My wife, uh, Corey's jewelry is, uh, and she also has a business called Clearly Handbags. She's busy all the time. Uh, she's at work, she works a hell of a lot more than I do. Um, and I'm proud of her. And um, so yeah, life is better than uh, could be expected. 2015, um, well, we made the record home. We were, I was living here in, in, uh, in Fort Worth. We recorded it in Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, because at that time Louisiana would give you, you know, match your dollars, whatever you spent, uh, on, on just for recording there. So basically a half half price record. But um, I had just left uh, RCA BNA Records, and I wanted to make an album that nobody was telling me what to do. Right? I just. Here's the songs I want to record. Here's what I want it to sound like. 
uh, Gary Pescosa and John Randall and Justin Pollard uh, were, you know, helped me produce that uh, record. But I think it, it had the sound for the first time that I wanted. Nobody else. It was, that's exactly what I wanted to have out. And so that record is, is very easy on my ears. Um, I mean, there's all the other records I like too because they mark time. Right, and that's why you know you call them a record. But uh, that one was the first one where I was like, really, that's that's exactly what I wanted to sound like. So, uh, and this new one too, Miles and Miles of You, is uh, uh, is the same same feeling for me. Um, I didn't, you know, I did I wasn't squirming around in my chair listening to a few of the songs, going, I don't know about that one. But um, yeah, these these last two records have been a joy. And, uh, we recorded uh, the, the new one, Miles and Miles of You, down in, down in Austin with Dwight Baker. And uh, it, you know, it was just my band, right? And that's the same thing with Holmes, my band. It's pretty for easy for us uh, to identify the songs that we think are gonna you know, be the ones that we really you know, push out the door towards radio or um, you know, try to really hype them up during the set and, you know, with new music for the live shows. Um, and I think Build You a Bar, was the first one when we were recording it where I was like, "Yeah, this is <laughs> this is ear candy," and uh, and the girls are gonna, you know, girls are gonna go crazy about it. So and, and really, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't really have to get too deep into into the, the theory of how you sell music. If the girls like it, you're gonna do all right with it. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, that that song is you know my wife's favorite. Uh, a lot of these songs are are autobiographical and. Um, uh, born on April 5th is a story, you know, that's just part of my life. My grandfather and I were born on the same day, just 61 years apart. So, uh, and then uh, Bad Bones, well, that's pretty self-explanatory, you know. Um, but you listen to it and you'll, it's a, it's a peek into my life that's happening as you watch it go by. All right, folks, there you go. That's our little road trip through my life. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all the fans, for tuning in. Thanks to my family for sticking with me. Uh, but anyway, hope you all had a great time. New record, Miles and Miles of You, coming out soon. And uh, I hope you dig it. Thanks again.